I was really excited about the possibility of redesigning uh, the keywork of the oboe. Um, it's been a sort of pet thing in the back of my mind for about 20 years, partly through playing contemporary works and thinking, if only this key was in another position, if only that key was in another position, if only there was a better way of doing this or that. Um, and so I, 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 before the, I even began work on the research, I had my mind full of ideas, possibilities and options of things I could do and had written several early drafts of, uh, of possible changes that could be made for the instrument. The instrument, of course, has to be a collaborative event if it's going to work. It's one thing for me to sit in a room and draw plans and ideas, uh, but to be able to do something like this, I, I needed support in the form of uh, funding, which came from the Arts and Humanities Research Council as a, as a research fellowship, and also um, I needed uh, the help of an instrument maker, in this case, Howarth of London, who've been uh, terrifically supportive and very inventive, as you can see from the instrument, in solving problems and um, in, in working together in a collaborative fashion upon the development of the instrument. Having an instrument with all these gadgets and gizmos is, is really exciting uh, and it helps to play and to perform the most complex music I've been doing. Uh, but to do that is simply looking backwards and I wanted to have the opportunity to develop the potential of the instrument to see what else is available. And so I wanted to work collaboratively with new composers who would write music that would push the boundaries, would explore the potential and the possibilities of this new instrument. Um, I was able, therefore, with a, a research grant from the AHRC once again, to commission five composers to write new works. I chose composers who had already written for the oboe, written either for themselves to play, in the case of Edwin Roxburgh, written for me, or had written very exploratory music for the instrument. And so I wasn't going to be starting by saying, oh yes, the ordinary elbow can do that as well. I'd be able to say, we all know what the ordinary elbow can do. This is what the new instrument can do. Where would you like to go with this? The five composers I chose to um, help me with this were Brian Fernihill, Michael Finnessy, Richard Barrett, Sam Hayden and Edwin Roxborough. All of these composers asked very probing, very profound questions about the instrument, about what it could do. And didn't allow me to sit back on what I generated. This was particularly the case with things like the microtonal work and the multiphonic work, because even though I developed 2,500 multiphonics, I would play a multiphonic for a composer and they would come back to me and say, can you find some more just like that, the same kind of sound? And so I had to go away and continue researching, continue exploring the, the, the potential of the instrument in order to answer their questions and see what I could come up with. In addition to those five composers, other composers have been interested in writing for the new instrument. David Gorton, Dorothy Kerr, my brother, Roger Regate, of course, Paul Archbold. Again, people who have written for the instrument before and who were interested in exploring the further potential of the new instrument. The collaborative work with these composers has really pushed the boundaries. That's the only way I can say it. Um, they've asked about the high range, they've asked about the microtones, and when I said I can do this, they said, yes, but can you do that? And so there's been constantly this sense of looking in depth at what could be possible on the instrument. One of the interesting areas that I found was that I developed the instrument, it was working well, and Edwin Roxburgh's piece uh, challenged me even further and challenged a, 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 another redesign. We'd worked on the multiphonic key, which is terrific, and worked very, very well, but actually was still not fast enough for Edwin's piece. And so we had to rethink and redesign the keywork in order to accommodate that, which was great. This is collaborative activity at a, at a very profound level in instrument design, and the composer, the instrument maker, the performer, all working in tandem to create something new on the instrument. Also, when I've been uh, traveling with the instrument and performing, performing uh, some of my own new works, the Transcendental Etudes I've written for it, I discovered in performance that one or two of the keys had to be slightly modified uh, because under the pressure of performance perhaps your hands are a little tighter or held in slightly a different position from a relaxed practice position. Uh, one or two of the keys weren't sitting quite as comfortably as I would have liked and so we also had to redevelop those. I've also worked collaboratively with a number of uh, people on the electronics and we are developing a range of electronic options for the instrument. Of course, the things with electronics today is that everything moves so fast that once you develop something, it's already out of date. So I suspect that will continue um, for a long time into the future.
there are other areas we would like to explore in more depth. Uh, we'd like to explore still the fourth octave key to see if we can solve that issue. Um, there are a couple of other octave key options. And of course, in regards to electronics, there are always new avenues and new paths that we can take.